It's Manly Beach, one of the world's great surfing beaches, not far from the spot where the first British settlers landed in Australia more than 175 years ago. And even in those hard living days, landings could hardly have been less comfortable than this. Today's settlers, the new Australians of the 1960s, are reaching Australia's shores from many countries at a rate of around 135,000 a year and finding their way even into such traditional Aussie strongholds as the life-saving clubs. And here's a present-day reminder of how it all began. That first landing of 1,030 soldiers, sailors and convicts in 1788 on a day now called Australia Day. It's the day when thousands more migrants become real Aussies and take the oath of allegiance to Queen Elizabeth II, the Queen of Australia. The day of more than a hundred naturalization ceremonies. To become full citizens, the new Aussies must have lived five years in the country and be able to speak English. But it doesn't mean goodbye to the customs and culture they've grown up with. For these Dutch youngsters here being welcomed by the immigration minister, Australia is an exciting new land, a land with simple images of the protected koala and the unprotected kangaroo, a land that's a vast continent in itself with a still largely unexplored outback. The migrants themselves are helping to change the face of Australia. They work on new dams. They work on the new Sydney, the harbour city that's growing skywards as fast as any in faraway Europe. They're helping to design it and to build it. This £6 million block in the city centre will house the New South Wales government offices. Its main tower, 34 storeys high, the highest in the land. Not for this dogman, the great outback. He's found all the space he wants over the city where one in five Australians lives. For other new Australians, work on an older landmark, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, now the symbol to tens of thousands of incoming migrants of a new life down under. He left England for Australia nearly 10 years ago, and here's a Sydney man who hails from Ireland. And a cuppa comes just as good, even when you're 12,000 miles away from the land of the tea break. Not all migrants are lucky enough to find the jobs they've dreamed about, but some do. Two ex-Royal Navy men from England, Peter Richardson and Norman Bickley, have landed on their feet, or rather fins, in this oceanarium at Manly. Peter was a frogman and Norman in submarines. Now they keep an underwater date three times a day with 2,000 fish and reptiles, including some 20 sharks and two stingrays. Some of the occupants they feed by hand are friendly enough, and this carpet shark is almost cuddly. But some of the sharks lurking in the tank can't be trusted, and nobody could say these boys were attracted by prospects of a retirement pension. The motives of those who look for a new start in Australia are as varied as the migrants themselves. Two million have gone there since the war, a million of them British. For half of the British migrants, the cost of the journey halfway around the world is £10 under the assisted passenger scheme and two out of five of them are being flown out by the country's international airline. For these families, it means a whole day in the air, a marathon flight from London in near 600 miles an hour hops between such places as Athens, Cairo, Karachi, Bangkok and Singapore. Some will find Australia far different from the country they'd imagined. Down there, Port Kembla, with one of the biggest steelworks in the British Commonwealth. And now, Sydney, and the start of a new life half a world away. They've come for jobs, a better climate, 
space in which to bring up their families. They've come with clear ideas and muddled ones. Some will settle, others will go back one day. Most, in the beginning, will feel their way. This Australian bank has its own advice department to help migrants not only on money matters and income tax, but also on civil rights, housing, education, and with translations. This couple from Europe have gone to live in Wollongong, a town just down the coast from Sydney that seems to grow with every day. For the husband, a job in the nearby Port Kembla Steelworks among men from 30 countries. And a home with a garden. Seven out of ten Australian houses are owner-occupied and 90,000 new ones a year are going up. By European levels, the standard of living is high. A five-day, 40-hour week is general and there are ten public holidays a year. The cost of living is not much different from that in Britain, and Saturday morning in Wollongong is like Saturday morning in a thousand places in Europe. For in this town, nine out of ten people are migrants. Yugoslavs, Italians, Germans, English, Irish, Scottish and Welsh, Spaniards and Greeks. Thirty and more different nationalities. Thirty and more different cultures. Integration is a gradual process. A Greek wedding such as this is a reminder that migrants often cling to their national groups long after they've settled in their adopted land. But many can't wait to merge. For tens of thousands, it's back to school, to evening classes in English. To be a naturalized Aussie, the migrant must have what's called an adequate knowledge of English. And that means he must be able to make himself understood in ordinary conversation with Australians. For some Europeans, life in Australia has its own special mysteries, like cricket. Football's different. Even Dinkum Aussies are following it now. Cricket's another matter. But who cares who's batting? Who wants to know about square leg and body line when the sun's out? Migration on the scale Australia knows today means a two-way traffic in ideas and habits and tastes. In the bigger cities, a growing cosmopolitan trend. In the high streets, more delicatessens. And not just to satisfy the food-conscious migrants from continental Europe. Those steak-minded Dinka Mozzies are now going in for frankfurters and mortadella, liverwurst and salami. One of Sydney's biggest suppliers of continental meats didn't have any authentic Aussies among his customers a few years ago. Today, they buy half his output. With chefs from Europe among the new Australians and head waiters, eating out is a growing habit in the bigger cities. And Paris has nothing on some of the restaurants. The migrants who find it easiest to get used to Australia are the youngsters. And for those still at school, naturalisation is automatic when their parents become full citizens. When you're young, there's no problem in getting used to new ways. Down Under soon becomes home. Yesterday, a world away. They merge naturally into a new generation of Australians. They become new Australians in a young country where space, except in the cities, is not hard to find. A country whose population of 11 million today may grow six times over in their lifetime. A country in a hurry to make a splash in the modern world. 